Hello friends, this is Jim with Science Talk. I want to share with you an interesting story. And this is, uh, comes under the, uh, the area of genetics. So, a little change from the climate story that I've been doing. Why do genes suggest most men died off 7,000 years ago? Modern men's genes suggest that something peculiar happened 5,000 to 7,000 years ago. That's not too long ago. Most of the male population across Asia, Europe, and Africa seems to have died off, leaving behind just one man for every 17 women. The so-called population bottleneck was first proposed in 2015, and since then, researchers have been trying to figure out what could have caused it. One hypothesis held that the drop-off in the male population occurred due to ecological or climatic factors that mainly affected male offspring. Another hypothesis suggested the die-off happened because some males had more power in society and thus produced more children. However, in a paper that's recently published in the journal Nature Communications, offers yet another explanation. People living in patrilineal clans, which are clans that consist of males from the same descent, might have fought with each other, wiping out entire male lineages at a time. All that testosterone. So that ratio of 17 females for every one male stri struck us as being very extreme, and there must be another explanation. So said senior study author Marcus Feldman, who is a population geneticist at Stanford University in California. According to their new explanation, the male population didn't take a nosedive, but rather the diversity of the Y chromosome decreased due to the way people lived and fought with each other. In other words, there weren't actually fewer males, just less diversity among the males and therefore less males actually reproducing. Humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes. There are 22 what we call somatic pairs of chromosome, which are chromosome related to the body. And then there's the, the 23rd pair are the sex chromosome. So if you're a female, you have XX. If you're a male, you have XY. In the insect world, there, if you are, they have what they call the W and the Z chromosome, if you're WW, you are a male. If you're WZ, you're a female. That's how it goes with the insects. So, of course, if things go right during meiosis, when you split the number of the what we call the uh, chromosomes occurs at diploid pairs, you split them to the haploid number. So, the 46 become divided into 23 and 23, and, and the daughter cells, and so on. So, if things go correctly during meiosis to split the number of chromosomes in half in what's called the germ cells, the gametes, the sperm and egg, uh, then you should have an X and you should have a, a, a Y in the sperm, and the eggs will always have an X, and depending on which sp uh, sperm finds the egg will determine the gender of the uh, embryo. Now, the Y chromosome does not have a female counterpart doesn't necessarily get shuffled around. In fact, it's actually quite smaller than the X chromosome. So it basically stays pretty much the same from grandfather to father to son and so forth. And aside from any small minor mutations, it's pretty, in fact, there's a, a, I think there was a study recently saying, why do we need men? Why do we need the Y chromosome? I mean, there are organisms that do undergo what's called parthenogenesis, where actually it basically is a type of asexual, but not necessarily asexual as in what you find among the protists, but you just have uh, reproduction. Uh, water fleas, the, uh, the daphnia, which are clodocerans, uh, are known to do this. Uh, basically, they just create eggs and off you go. There's a new bunch of organisms. So, Going back to the hypothesis, they're saying that war might have caused this bottleneck of the Y chromosome. So to test their hypothesis, the researchers conducted 18 simulations in which they created different scenarios for the bottleneck 
that included factors as, such as Y chromosome mutation, competition between groups, and death. The simulation showed that warfare between patrilineal clan could have caused this so-called Y chromosome bottleneck because the members of each patrilineal clan would have very similar Y chromosomes to each other. So if one clan killed off another, it would also slash the chance of that family's Y chromosome moving on to offspring. In the researchers, this is a really an interesting point here. In the researchers' simulations which patrilineal clans did not exist, the bottleneck did not occur. Very interesting. What's more, there was no such bottleneck in the woman of the time as is shown by the mitochondrial DNA. Now, mitochondria are something called the powerhouse for the cell. These are uh, little organelles found within, the, within your cells that, pro that provide your power. Basically, help, they provide the energy for us to do what we do. Me waving my hands around is the result of uh, the mitochondria powering the muscles and, and so on, so I can sit there and look like an idiot waving my hands. But any, anyway, uh, mitochondria has its own DNA, as do the uh, chloroplasts that are found in the cells of leaf. Chloroplasts contain chlorophyll, which is the pigmentation uh, that's involved with photosynthesis. Sunlight hits the, uh, the chlorophyll, it sets off the uh, electron transport chain mechanism, which the end result is that you, they create the glucose. I'm not going to go through the Krebs cycle. But uh, the reason why plants appear green is because the green pigmentation in that, uh, those frequencies of the uh, visible electromagnetic spectrum is reflected back to us. Now, Lynn Margulis presented a, a theory, and she's basically been proven right, that mitochondria and chloroplasts originally were uh, free-floating organisms. Basically, uh, the type of bacteria, a type of protist, and that they became uh, involved in symbiotic relationships, being uh, incorporated into a larger cell, and we have that, to, uh, this, that legacy to this day. That's the reason why they have their own DNA. Now, mitochondrial DNA is only obtained from the mother. The father does not contribute any mitochondrial DNA. So, when you look at a person's genetic material, it's not only the genetic material located in the nucleus of the cell, but it's also the genetic material that contained within the mitochondria of the cells, which are found, the mitochondria are found in the cytoplasm, not the nucleoplasma, so they're outside the nucleus, doing that thing in the cytoplasm. So, offsprings acquire a lot of their genetic material from their mother, not just the nuclear, but also the mitochondria. So that's important to remember. So, Dr. Feldman continues to state that in that same group, the woman could have come from anywhere. They, they would have been brought into the group from either the victory that they had over other groups, or they could have been females who were residing in that area already before. And basically, he goes on to, as an example, if you look at colonization throughout history, people generally kill the males, kill the men, and they kept the women. Monica Carmen. She's the population geneticist at the University of Tartu in Estonia. She was not part of the study. However, she was the lead author of the 2015 study that first proposed the bottleneck. And she basically said that this study was, a, a, was wonderful. The beauty of the study, she says, is the way the researchers framed their hypothesis and demonstrated that fighting clans are indeed likely to cause a drastic drop in male genetic diversity. But she does add a cautionary note saying that we do not really have much information on the actual societal organization from that time. And that's a fair point. So maybe there are other socio-cultural uh, aspects at work. Chris Tyler Smith, who's an evolutionary geneticist at the Sanger Institute in the United Kingdom, also not involved in the study, said that the researchers did careful computer simulations 
whereas the previous papers had not. The assumption that the cause of the bottleneck was warfare is a reasonable one, especially given the time period. At that time, five to 7,000 years ago, people were still living in small clans doing small-scale farming, a time right before people moved into larger societies and built large cities. It was a transition between early farming using stone tools and later farming in societies using metal tools. And then after this bottleneck, you see the start of societal organization and the shift from small-scale societies to having cities and organizations of people into groups that are not so intent on maintaining the Y chromosomal chromosome lineage. Now, of course, they were back then they did not know about such things, so it wasn't a conscious aspect other than uh, conquer them, kill the men, take the women, probably. But the point he's making is that with the shift to largest uh, organizations of society, and then where we start having specific roles that people play, farmers, machinists, accountants, what have you, then the likelihood of just clan warfare is greatly reduced, and then the bottleneck can be uh, opened up. And basically, and that's what he said, you know, during this uh, time period, uh, the male uh, population could bounce back, or at least the genetic diversity could bounce back. This is interesting because researchers typically focus on behavior that may have a genetic basis, but not on behavior that influences genes. This is an example of what cultural preference can do in changing the level of genetic variation. And that's true. Yes, the genes can you know, determine our behavior, but at other times the behavior uh, can then influence the genes. It's much like an uh, environment influencing genes and so on. So that's a, that's a very fair point. It's a, it's, it's a good point. And uh, I, I think his, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Feldman's uh, analysis here uh, and take is a, a pretty good one. So anyway, um, that's just an interesting story, uh, a report I came across uh, in the journal there, and I uh, just thought I'd share it with you. So it just goes to show that uh, on at least the male side of humanity, we could be a lot more closely related than previously thought, and it's, it's all the uh, more frustrating when you think of all the societal tensions and the uh, issues of racism that goes on, that there really is no need for that. So, um, thank you for your time. We'll talk again. Hey folks, just a reminder to please subscribe and click the bell so you know when I drop a video. Please share my videos. Please tell others of my channel and of the work that I do. I also hope that you will consider becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash science talk with Jim Massa, where from time to time I upload videos there exclusively for my patron subscribers. Details in the description box below. Thanks.